Welcome back, everybody, to the Houston Texans Madden 21 franchise rebuild. We are 6-2 at the halfway point. We're going to focus on a rematch today. After the 17 to nothing embarrassment last episode, we have a chance with a quick turnaround. After one game against the Broncos, we go back to take on the Colts, this time on the road. Last episode was certainly strange. Not even a field goal from us. Very uncompetitive game played by the Houston offense, but it's our only game like that all season long. This was the equivalent to last year's week one, losing 20 to three to the Jacksonville Jaguars and just playing atrocious on offense. We have a chance to turn that around and make that 17 nothing game a distant memory. We'll start out here. I want to talk a little bit about the contract situations with this team. Rookie quarterback contract obviously makes things so much easier. Although, you do get less relief from a quarterback taking number one overall. Those top contracts will be larger than most rookies, especially once you get outside the first round. So, yes, we do have a tremendous discount, but it's more like... 20 extra million dollars or so 25 million extra that we get to spend because we don't pay a quarterback 30 million i gotta say i have really enjoyed justin johnson on the team this year and i thought this would be a one-year situation i'm not so sure just because of how impactful he is how versatile he is but realistically speaking with all the linemen we have there's no way you end up keeping five long term, so if we sign Johnson again, we're losing somebody at some point. But this salary is just not that bad. It's actually a lot smaller than it should be. He easily should be a $20 million a year player. And 41.6 over 3 is only 13.8. There's been this big talk in like the football community over the past few years about the importance of pass rush versus coverage and i'd say that like seven eight years ago i was definitely all about the coverage and then as i started to i think just understand things better and paid better attention to elite pass rushers and their impacts i'm more of a d-line over coverage guy now although like defensive backs are usually like my favorite players in the entire league but uh i just think that when you have a dominant front four you can get by with like average players behind that pass rush in most cases now 50 50 balls against the elites of the league that's still going to be a weakness you're going to have strengths and weaknesses and i'm all about having this d-line be a major strength so i don't know yet how this is going to play out but I really want to bring back Justin Johnson. He's only 26 years old. Robert Bullard's a free agent. I don't know because this becomes more of an issue of scarcity to me. We have to have someone play right tackle. And if it were a deep league, I'd probably say, yeah, we could do better than Robert Bullard. But that's hard. And we've seen that in the real NFL just a few years ago when the Vikings gave Riley Reef and Mike Remmers large contracts for guys who, if they like hit their peak in that contract, would be average at best. And in the case of Riley Reef, that's exactly what he was, average to above average for most of that deal. So that's another issue. You can't just say we're moving on out of principle because I'm not paying an average tackle $10 million or whatever it is. You gotta be flexible, or you're going to end up with like the Panthers offensive line in front of Cam in the Super Bowl. There was a good question a little bit ago about like the depth of certain positions in the league. And for a while, there were some years where I had the XP cranked up too high for a lot of positions. It's really not a big deal now, because anybody who was in the series when it began is no longer a prime developer. They're all old now. By the way, this right here is just ridiculous. Our top players are all 25, 26 years old. Such a great young team we have built up for this season. Gotta make the most of it. But going to some other positions here. 
For left tackles, there are some stars. Like, a big thing for me is making sure there are stars at a variety of positions, and hopefully there are a lot of players developing who were drafted in series. That's usually a slow process. Clay Jones, Rob Mackey, we're getting there with some of these tackles. So, there's a fair amount of players above 80. 18, there's obviously a lot more edge rushers. But that's where I think the real NFL is as well. So, how many players here are above 80? At just one end spot, you got double the tackles. I could probably afford to boost the XP on offensive linemen now that anybody who was in the game on day one isn't going to get the benefit of that XP. They're just too old for it to really matter. Tristan Wirfs, 28. He still needs 31 XP, 31K. That doesn't matter now. XP could be 6,000, and that's what it would take for him to be developing too fast. But there are a fair amount of offensive linemen that are above 80 overall. There's around 40. So Bullard is one of the top 40 tackles in the league. Everybody plays two, so there's 64. You're almost forced to pay him at that point. I will make a couple changes here to XP. I'm going to drop defensive ends just down to 150. Defensive tackles, I actually like where that is. And then for tackles and guards, I'll probably just get all of these up to 200. And that's where we'll keep things for the rest of the season. But uh, one thing that I came to find in Madden 20 and I've built upon that going into this game is the optimal XP slider set is not one you set at the beginning of your franchise and keep there. It's one that escalates over the period of like three to five years because you want the young players when the game starts to develop well. But the thing is, is those roster updates, I mean, what's, uh, what's Justin Jefferson gonna be in Madden 22? And then how many players in your leagues that you draft as a receiver will end up that high after a year? It probably won't happen. So that's why you have to escalate. Because if you start too high right away, you have too many players getting the high overall. But if you do it over a period of time, it's not perfect, obviously, but it'll get you the best blend. So we do have a fair amount of like 99 overall wide receivers. I'm not too worried about it. I like that there are star players that play like stars. Regression will take care of the veterans and then we'll have a league full of players all drafted in the series in no time. Let's get on to the action now. That's a long intro. That's how my videos have increased in length steadily over the years. All right, let's do some scouting. Still have not found much as far as offensive linemen goes. Like, there's not even enough linemen for five teams to add a starter, I don't think. Maybe five. Maybe literally five. And four of those players are probably going to be in the 60s. If we want to keep this defensive line together, that means we're moving on from other players. So, receiver doesn't sound like a need, right? Well, if you want to build a team a certain way, you can kind of make it a need if you end up cutting somebody. But this class is not only worse than any other we've had recently, most of the players are overrated. We do have a couple first round talents here, a potential value, Daniel Blue from Stanford, a slot receiver with great hands, catching traffic and short route running. Definitely a fan of that skill set. And we already went over Tyreek Fowler. And now Blue does have, okay, he's the same talent. Obviously I would go Fowler here, not knowing combine, just because the ceiling with that size and that top three is astronomical. Leslie Good's been really solid for us. I don't think there are a lot of issues at left tackle. I think Bullard struggles a lot more than he does. 27 years old, 85 overall, 15th left tackle in the league. I've had Jaden O'Neal as a focus player, so we're getting that expedited development, which is also nice because he's an older rookie at 24 years old. We're just gonna keep going with the pass coverage until it's at a spot where I'm happy with it. I had a question yesterday on the video about why I usually go zone over man as far as the archetypes go. And it's mainly just a product of the way Madden is. The man coverage in the game 
has been really bad for about 15 years. On the PS2 Madden's, man coverage was a lot more viable than it's been any time since. I think it's actually a lot better on Madden 21, but there's still a lot of issues with off coverage even being usable. So, zone is just the way you gotta play Madden. It's like the default way to play. That's how the CPU calls plays. It's like the developers know their engine has that limitation, so it's pretty much all zone. And uh, in real life, I mean, very few teams are like man heavy. I love to run a press man scheme, a really aggressive one. I love that style of defense, but in Madden, it's a bad idea. And perhaps the greatest reason why has nothing to do with cornerbacks at all. It's because tight ends are uncoverable with linebackers and safeties and man coverage most of the time. Alright, got that stuff out of the way. Let's get to some action now. We're talking football with the Houston Texans. We're eight games in. Looking to bounce back from the 17-0 embarrassment. Can we do it against Denver? Well, the offense played better, and now the defense didn't. The Broncos have a lot of talent on their offense in this series. They added Jonathan Taylor, and if you start a Broncos franchise right now, I mean, you're talking Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, don't forget about Tim Patrick, I like him, and Noah Fant. Drew Locke, three touchdowns, solid day against us, and only two sacks. I mean, how often has Roseman been sacked more than the opposing quarterback this year? He did get 45 yards downfield, though, with one of these. I like that. Robert Penn, two scores. He leads the league in that department. 4.1 a carry. Jonathan Taylor at 3.8. A lot of carries here for Grubbs and Gillisley. Grubbs has quietly held a steady average this year, too, playing a lot better. KJ Hamler, 6, a buck 11. George Ingram, 5 for 109. Norwood for 84 and a touchdown. Fant 81 yards. Judy 38 and 2. That's a strange stat line. 5 for 38. All screen passes. Oh, Leslie Good. I talked earlier about him not struggling. Today he certainly did. And that was in a matchup against Miles Burse. Bradley Chubb had a sack as well. We had two with Carr and Johnson. I'm pretty sure Burst is really highly rated. That name is familiar. And I mean, we just allowed three sacks to him, so yeah. That was the matchup. 99 finesse moves, 99 awareness, 99 tackle. What I like about this series is that we have a lot more star power than in any other series I think that we've done because of the XP sliders. Positives outweigh the negatives for me. All right, the rematch, and this is for first place. Six and three versus six and three, and here comes Jacksonville just to be annoying. Well, this has become a massive game for us. Saw one of the top comments last episode talking about how we're going to find a way to go to eight and eights. We don't need that energy right now. You know how, like, episode 100 is always special because it's just a nice round number? I think episode 88 is going to be a special one in this series. That's become the iconic number. I also got some feedback on the archetypes for Roseman. That field general should give us more deep accuracy. It sure seems like, not just with Roseman, but strong arm is throw power, medium. Like, I think that's right. 80 overall now for Roseman. That should give him an ability, right? Three awareness, one deep. Like clockwork. 80 deep accuracy now. His awareness is 84 as a rookie. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's still going to get better over time. But 84 is in a really nice spot for him. Has Kurt Reiner become a little bit overrated in this series? Have I overrated him a little bit? The first couple games were just so good. Like, erase those couple of games, and I think we've seen good run defense play, but next to nothing in terms of coverage play. We like Robert Penn. 90 overall, that's what I'm talking about. Awareness, break, tackle, and trucking. All the way with normal development. We're still without Stefan Ferris and Shaq Mason. The Colts 
are missing three players. I don't think any of these three played in the game we played the other day. I know Josh Jones was out. So it's time for the rematch. Texans and Colts after the 17 to nothing disappointment. The Colts have been on a tear, winning four out of five and helping the Jaguars make their season something out of nowhere. So they're coming off a victory. We just sim this one. Solid win over the LA Chargers. Winston, two touchdowns. Herbert, two picks. Glenn Barkley, four for 65. I think we watched a game against him as a rookie, and he was really good against us there. Like, they should be starting him. The athleticism doesn't really stand out a ton, but the acceleration is really, really valuable when it's that high. 97. Like, I think I'd rather have this combo than, like, 91 speed with, like, 91 acceleration. I just think this ends up meaning a lot. 93 change of direction as well with some break tackle ability. So it's okay if he doesn't have the top end speed. He can still create. Here we go. Rematch. Shadon Roseman trying to snap the losing streak. Showtime once again. Second straight episode against the Indianapolis Colts. Roseman played his worst game of the year against this defense. The bar was not set very high. If we score, it's already a better game. Defense played great, but then against Denver they struggled. So what version of this team are we going to see today? Let's see if we get back on track. We open. Colts have the football at their own 25-yard line. And now we're in their dome. Jameis Winston on first and 10, scrambles straight up the middle and slides down ahead of Kurt Reiner. It's a gain of six. Two receivers left for Winston on second down. Feels the pressure, finds an open man. Across the 50, he's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Indianapolis. What happened? Will Crowder wins 69 yards. How is he that open? Did we not have all 11 players on the field? What do we call that leaves that little route wide open with no one to make the tackle? What is this? Cover four palms up against curl flats? Come on. How do we mess this up? Oh no. What is Fletcher doing here? I know there are some coverage bugs here. Like, there is zero reason for him to leave this spot. Oh, man. What a start. Might I remind you of the first six years of the series? Houston trails 7 to nothing, and they take over at their own 25. Two receivers left. And a flip to Amari Jones. Can't get outside. No gain. Going empty on second down. Wanting the screen. What on earth was that? Penalty marker down. And I think it's for pass interference. Is that on the offense? How'd I know? How'd I know it was going to be on the offense? I suppose because it was the only option. Second down and 20, Roseman across the middle. Falling ahead for 10 yards is Gordon Norwood to set up third and 10. I already feel like this is like a desperate play for us. Third and 10, pressure picked up nicely, but it won't last forever. Roseman! Oh, it's dropped by Canavitz! Oh no, the frustration continues. What's happening to our team right now? 7-0 Colts taking over with pretty good field position. And there is the playmaker, Glenn Barkley, into the secondary! Down to the Texans, 42. 20-yard 20 run. Handoff goes to Barkley. Again, carving through the middle. First down, 11 yards. I like Glenn Barkley. I don't like that he's on the Colts. At the 31, it's first and 10. 
Jameis Winston back to pass. Scrambling up the middle again. We're giving up all these yards right there. First and 10 from the 20. Another good run. I'm done with this. All right, Justin Johnson has to go back inside. This is not working. The problem is, is I don't think they're actually going to keep us in our base that much. Second down and two. They'll head to the air. Winston on the move again. Falls forward, driving through Kurt Reiner's tackle. It's a first down. Handoff Marlon Mack. Justin Johnson meets him. It's a gain of four. But now Johnson's lined up at end as they spread out the defense and run it with Barkley. It's a touchdown! 14-0 out the gate. This is even worse than the previous video. What happened to the Texans? This interior outside of Quentin Nelson shouldn't be dominating this well. But it's Nelson pulling around. He throws the key block. We have never needed a touchdown more. Well, maybe in the 28-3 game we could have used one. Roseman under pressure. Got it out there. Candidate makes a move and gets across the 40-yard line. There's 17. Back to pass on first down. Roseman. Floating out of bounds. The ball doesn't seem to be coming out as quick. I feel like we've seen a lot of plays where he's showing that patience. But it's not leading to anything. And now he's hit again. Third and ten heading back to the air. Roseman gets the pass away downfield. That's caught! Inside the 30 by Jermaine Candidate. Robert Penn not getting much focus here early on. First and 10 underneath to Ingram. That should be our bread and butter play. Roseman facing the blitz. Gets it outside and that's another drop. Ignore it. It was Dante Hairston, my favorite player. Third down and two. Penn the back. Running left. Good block, Hairston. But then Malik Hooker comes down to make the tackle. It's a loss of one. That's just a really good play. He's got great speed at safety. No one's out there. It's one-on-one, -on -one, him and Penn. 14 to three. And the Indianapolis Colts have taken over at their 25 yard line. An excellent start to the day. Glenn Barkley gets the carry. Five more, they've made it look so easy. We had the top run defense going into last episode. Well, nine runs to one pass. What does that tell you? Winston back to the air. Caught. First down. Handoff goes to Barkley. Finally, there to make a play. We have Joe Jackson. Lost a one. With two minutes to play in the opening quarter, Winston gets it away, and that is hauled in at the 47. Good play under pressure, and now Roseman taking his role as a leader seriously, trying to get the team fired up again. Third and two, on the ground, first down. Marlon Mack overpowers Kurt Reiner. Setting up the screen for Glenn Barkley. Nelson out in front. Up to the 45 and tough to bring down. Can someone please trade for him or something? Get him out of this division. On to the second quarter. It's been all indie to this point. Big third down and six. Winston looks outside with it and that's going to be well shy. Finally a good drive for the defense. Oh, of course. I knew it was going to do that. You know why? Because it's the Houston Texans franchise. 
Of course it went out at the one. Of course it's inside the one, actually. Up the middle. Come on, thank you! Just got out of the end zone. Not exactly enough breathing room. That was maybe a two-foot gain. And now, going back to where we started! If it's a 99-yard touchdown, I'll post seven episodes tomorrow! It's a safety! Come on! Darius Leonard scored yesterday, he scores today! What are the chances of that? We'll sim eventually. I have to watch more of this. Here's Jameis Winston on first and ten. He'll get outside the pocket. Find some daylight. He's across midfield and slides down at the 45-yard line. Winston is a really solid quarterback in this franchise. He's taking care of the football. He's getting yards, scrambling. The offense really clicked yesterday for them. They were hyper-efficient, actually. Like 24-28 passing. Getting all these catch-and-runs against us. And now they're going empty. Going away from the running game, at least. We'll bring six. Wide open for a first down. That is Donovan Young. Marlon Mack is the running back. Straight ahead into Cordell Hillhouse. Trying to show he can play some run defense as well. Winston facing the blitz. On the outside, it's hauled in once more. We're putting him in tough situations, but every throw is just perfect. Winston's playing unbelievably well. Third down in inches, the back is Glenn Barkley, who averages five yards a carry against us. And he'll get more than that here. Down to the 14-yard line. I guess I was not giving him full credit, saying he averages five. He's averaging seven right now. From the 14-yard line, straight ahead. And stopped at the 11 by Kalik Hudson. Toss to the outside. Mack gets a block. He will score again! Oh, maybe not. I thought he broke the plane. What a perfect block. This team can actually run like power plays and pitches. Plays that haven't been great in Madden for a couple years because of the old line pull logic. Check out the right tackle on this play though. He's pulling out in front. Good block by Donovan Young. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. It doesn't always. And you know what? I was right. That's a touchdown. That's six points right there. They will not challenge. Don't you dare call our play. Toss right. Mac. He's in trouble and loses five. They should have had the touchdown. They didn't go to the fullback dive. And they're staying in the goal line personnel. Oh, wait, no. There's a receiver at bottom of the screen. Marlon Mack met by Jabari Carr. Winston heads to the air. And he has some room but slips. And he goes down. That was close. He tripped over Marlon Mack. So we're relying on getting lucky, I guess. 19-3. What does it take to score a touchdown against this team? On first and ten. Good blitz pickup, and that is incomplete. They were all over Norwood. There should probably have been a pass interference there. Four on the rush. Here comes pressure. Dumped off to Penn. Good tackle. The Colts are just a team that refuses to make a ton of mistakes. Third down and seven. Roseman floats it and that's wide open. There goes Penn across midfield. Four man rush. On the slant, there's Candidate. Having a bit of a season resurgence in the first half. I want a touchdown. Roseman on the keeper. He's got a lead blocker. He's going to the end zone. 
Shadon Roseman's first career rushing touchdown. It comes at a perfect time. What a beautiful read option and a great block from Gordon Norwood. Our first touchdown against the Colts all season. 19 to 10. We'll do some simulating now, but the Colts have a two possession lead and a chance to add on to it before the half. A couple first downs in the air, eight to Driver, seven to Glenn Barkley. Sack by Hillhouse. Slowing the offense down, they will be in field goal range and make the kick. So we're looking at a 12 point game going into halftime. We'll sim another drive of each and probably watch the rest unless it gets out of hand. Sacked on third down, a three and out to begin the second half. Not what we wanted to see there at all. And Indy takes over. Third and four, they get nine to Young. Loss of three for Mack. Third and eight. There we go. A defensive stop. Let's make this interesting. Robert Penn deep in the eye on first and ten. And it's a fullback dive. Russ Watson plows ahead for two. Just one of the little extra breathing room. Roseman from the end zone. Hooks up with Canavitz. Brought in at the 25-yard line. And he's up to 85 on the day. Offset eye now on second down. Watson the motion man. Back to the air on second and seven. Roseman under pressure. Gets rid of this throw. He's now 10 for 17. A buck 43. And needs a 39 for a first down. Five on the rush. Pressure handled nicely. Caught underneath. No! He's so close. No! They got to be able to like stop and get upfield in that situation. Rather than round it off there and go out of bounds. Colts take over and they run it straight ahead. Another solid run, this time by Marlon Mack. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Indianapolis on second and three. It's Winston connecting again with Will Crowder. They just keep getting open. Winston across the middle this time for Donovan Young. Colts up to midfield. On the carry. It's a first down and still going Glenn Barkley. Fighting through contact out to the 40 and Jabari Carr is hurt once again. And he is going to come out of the game. We go to a sub package now. This is a 3-3-5. Blitz on the way. Caught. Again, we just can't make a play on the ball. Maybe we do got to get better with the coverage or something. On second and four, there goes Winston. Up to the 30. And he broke two tackles. Come on. Up the middle again. Marlon Mack across the 20. He gains eight. Why can't we play well against this team? I don't understand. Empty from the 18. Again, we blitz. It doesn't work, and that's a touchdown. Awful angle taken by David Perkins, and Hills finds the end zone. 28-10. Every time we blitz, they have an answer. Jameis Winston, no problem. Reiner couldn't get a hand on it. And I thought Perkins was at least going to have a chance, but he took a really bad angle. There it is right there. If we somehow win this game, I'll post two episodes tomorrow. Shadon Roseman on first and ten has to throw this pass away. He's been better in this game. But the defense is just playing terrible. 
Handoff goes to Robert Penn. And our running game is nothing like theirs. 25 seconds to play in the third quarter. On third and 10, Roseman felt the rush and got rid of it. Three and out, Houston. Roseman frustrated the whole team all of a sudden, not playing like they did the first six weeks. Indianapolis end of the third quarter, and that's a sack for Jabari Carr. Glad to see he's in the game. And that's 10 on the season. Third and 16, it's a quick stop, so we're at least getting the football back in a hurry. Just got to do it like three more times and make sure we score three touchdowns. Let's start it here with a good return. You know what? A special teams boost would be perfect right now. Good punt back to the 30-yard line. And Dante Fry gets about four on the return. There goes Robert Penn. Empty backfield for Shadon Rosemond. Four on the rush. Roseman going up top. He wants Canavid, and it's broken up. Incomplete. We've only ran 30 plays. We're losing the time of possession battle again against Indy. Up to the 44 now for a gain of seven. Three yards to go. Roseman patient. He connects again with Jermaine Canavit. Up to the Colts 37. Under pressure and intercepted. An accurate throw by Shadon Roseman. And another turnover. This defense seems to have figured us out. I can't believe how badly we've played in both of these games. I thought it would be at least a somewhat different game. It really isn't. It might be worse. It is for the defense. This is third and one with Glenn Barkley in the game. I have no confidence in this working out. Winston, 360. He might have it. But he doesn't. At the 18-yard line, the Texans take over. Roseman feels the pressure, and he is done with that play. Second game against this defense. We haven't seen him look like the rookie of the year. And this is not the most talented defense we've faced. Second down. This is Norwood ahead to the 31. First down. Come on, Carolina. Help us out down there. 17-17. Roseman on first down. Connects with Penn, who has been a non-factor in this game. Three rush, eight in coverage, broken up for candidates. Where's Amari Jones? I haven't seen him today. Roseman fires downfield, and that is incomplete. Why aren't we throwing the ball ever to Amari Jones? It seems somebody just gets no targets every week. Fourth and six now for Shadon Roseman. It is caught. Nice play by George Ingram. Trying to spread out the defense now on second down. Roseman fires and connects again with Jermaine Candidate out at the 46-yard line. On the rush, they get to Roseman and he misses. There's been a lot of pressure to deal with in this game. Second down and 10 for Rosemond. And now he's going down. He's sacked by DeForest Buckner. Third and 17. Going for it all here. Intercepted. What happened there? I thought that was going to go way further, but it's Samuels with the interception. I believe he intercepted Rosemond yesterday. I guess the pressure did have an impact there. Second interception of the day. 
second ugly game against the Indianapolis Colts. And we're going to lose this season series and fall into second place. Five and one to six and four. Where do we go next? The Houston Texans season is now unraveling, having lost their third consecutive game. What is it going to take for this team to get back on track? It's definitely not a rematch with the Colts, as we found out today. Winston, once again excellent, outplaying Shadon Roseman. His two worst quarterback ratings will have come against this team. Their running game is really, really dynamic. Marlon Mack was really good today. Glenn Barkley's always good. Winston gets 42. We gotta fix this. Or 8-8 eight and eight becomes a possibility. We do have an upgrade here for George Ingram. Let's go route runner this time just to switch things up. Awareness, deep, medium, short, release. Very nice upgrade for him. Does anybody remember what's next on the schedule? It's the rematch. Last year's 28-3 debacle. Same stadium, same teams. And the Texans need this win. We still have a head-to-head -to, -head to go against Jacksonville. But now we're in second place behind Indianapolis. What else is going on in the AFC? The Bengals and Ravens are strong, and they're both better than us right now record-wise. The Bills are 7-3. The Chiefs are 7-3. We do not want to be in this wild card mess, even if there are three wild card teams per conference now. We need to get to 10 wins. And we have six games left to do it. Can we go four and two? Shadon Rosemond was excellent to start the year. Has he hit that proverbial rookie wall? Or is it just one team matches up well against us? I suppose we're about to find out. We'll take on the New England Patriots next episode after watching Roseman play the two worst games of his rookie season. We are in desperate need of a rebound and the Patriots might be a better matchup for us. I say might because we blew a 28-3 lead against them last year. Nate Wheeler at 83 overall this season has not been as good as his rookie year. Same amount of interceptions, but now the touchdowns are down, completion percentage down, yards per attempt down. We've got to play better. We've got to beat this team. And we'll find out next time if we can do it. Oh, did Jacksonville win? I think they ended up losing that game. I'm pretty sure wrong series. Got to go to this division. Yeah, they lost, thankfully. We've lost three straight. And that's not quite the worst losing streak right now, but it's down there. Meanwhile, the Bengals are the hottest team after a... 3-3 three and three start. And then, of course, Indianapolis. So that is going to do it for this episode, everybody. Another bad game for Shadon Roseman and the Houston Texans. Can we avoid going 8-8? Eight and eight? We'll try to rebound next time against the Patriots. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video despite another lackluster game. I do appreciate all the support. Love checking the feedback on all these episodes. I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day.